Toronto believed its traffic plague was unbeatable until Canada stunned the world by backing a $28 billion driverless subway and rewriting the script on urban life. Imagine slashing commutes in half, cutting 28,000 cars off the streets every day, and unleashing a construction revolution spanning highways, airports, and electrified rails. But what really convinced a nation to reimagine mobility? And can these radical solutions actually work? Here's where the transformation begins. Construction crews broke ground on the Ontario line in March 2022, launching one of the most ambitious transit projects in Toronto's history. Stretching 15.6 kilometers from Exhibition Place in the west to the Ontario Science Centre in the east, this fully automated subway is engineered to move nearly 388,000 people every day. The promise is simple. Cut cross-city commutes from over an hour to less than 30 minutes and take 28,000 car trips off the road every single day. Beneath bustling streets, tunnel-boring machines carve deep under Queen and Corktown, while elevated tracks rise above neighborhoods like Thorncliff Park and Flemington. The Ontario line blends tunnels, surface routes, and elevated guideways, all stitched together by advanced signaling systems and driverless trains. Trains will arrive as often as every 90 seconds during rush hour, synchronized with platform edge doors and powered by energy-efficient propulsion. Thousands of workers now shape the future of Toronto's mobility, from engineers mapping out complex station integration to skilled trades operating heavy machinery on tight urban timelines. This is the most ambitious transit project Toronto has ever seen, a Metrolinx engineer explains. We're using every modern construction and automation technique available. For daily riders, the impact is personal. My commute used to be over an hour. This will cut it to 30 minutes, says one downtown commuter. The Ontario line isn't just a subway, it's a promise to make city life faster, cleaner, and more connected. Across the Greater Toronto Area, another transformation is underway, one that stretches far beyond the downtown core. Go Transit, Ontario's regional rail backbone, is in the midst of a $21 billion overhaul. The plan? Swap out aging diesel locomotives for a modern electric fleet and build more than 200 kilometers of new tracks, tunnels, and bridges. For commuters in places like Oakville or Markham, this means trains will soon arrive every 15 minutes, not just during the morning rush, but all day in both directions. The impact reaches into neighborhoods where crowded highways and infrequent trains have long been the norm. Electric trains promise a quieter ride and faster acceleration, but the biggest change comes in the air. By switching to electric power, GO Transit is set to cut operating emissions in half, even as service multiplies across the network. For riders like Justin Singh, a nurse who works alternating shifts, the difference is more than numbers. Electric trains mean I can get home faster, and I'm not waking up at 4.30 a.m. just to catch the only train that works for my schedule. Thousands of workers are building this new system, laying overhead wires, expanding bridges, and integrating stations with local transit. It's a massive, coordinated effort, one designed to make regional travel cleaner, more reliable, and ready for the future. As electric trains prepare to roll out, the promise is clear. Better service for more people, with a lighter footprint on the environment. Nearly $5 billion is being invested to transform Toronto Pearson International Airport into a next-generation global hub. By 2035, the airport aims to handle more than 65 million passengers each year, about the population of France passing through annually. The expansion includes a mega-terminal with real-time baggage tracking, automated check-in, and upgraded international arrivals. New, flood-resistant and energy-efficient systems are designed to withstand the extremes of future weather. Faster check-in and baggage claim make travel less stressful, says one frequent flyer. To keep daily operations moving, construction is carefully phased, with major upgrades happening in the background while planes continue to land and take off. 
On the ground, Highway 413 is taking shape as a $6 billion, 60-kilometer expressway connecting Highway 400 to the 407 ETR. This isn't just another road. It's built for the future, with electric vehicle charging stations at rest stops, noise-reducing barriers, and wildlife crossings woven into the design. Autonomous grading equipment and drone mapping keep construction efficient and safe. We are balancing mobility needs with environmental protection, explains a municipal planner. For drivers, the promise is less time in traffic and more reliable freight routes, while for communities, it's a smarter corridor that considers both people and nature. Together, Pearson's upgrade and Highway 413 complete the region's mobility puzzle, linking air and road networks for a rapidly growing population. At the edge of Lake Huron, a facility quietly powers nearly one in three homes and businesses across Ontario. Bruce Power's $13 billion refurbishment is not just a facelift, it's a full-scale overhaul of six nuclear reactors, each one essential to the province's clean energy grid. Inside these massive concrete vaults, the work is anything but ordinary. Custom-built robots, guided by AI, handle the most dangerous and precise tasks removing aging pressure tubes, installing new calandria tubes, and inspecting reactor interiors with sub-millimeter accuracy. This approach keeps workers out of high radiation zones and compresses timelines that once stretched years into months. A technician on site puts it simply, robotics let us do work that would be too dangerous for humans, keeping the project on schedule. The scale is hard to overstate. Bruce Power supplies about 30% of Ontario's electricity, steady, reliable, and free of carbon emissions. The environmental payoff is massive. Keeping these reactors online avoids emissions equal to taking 5 million cars off the road. Thousands of skilled jobs are supported by the refurbishment, not just at the plant, but through a supply chain that stretches across the province. The result is a silent engine behind Ontario's electrified transit and growing cities, ensuring clean power flows where it's needed most. Off the coast of Newfoundland, a new kind of energy project rises from the Atlantic. Here, more than 300 floating wind turbines are planned to harness some of the world's strongest ocean winds, generating over 4 gigawatts of electricity, enough to power millions of homes. But the real breakthrough lies in what happens next. Instead of sending all that electricity to the grid, the project will use cutting-edge electrolyzers to split water into hydrogen, creating a clean fuel with zero carbon emissions. The scale is striking. A billion-dollar investment, thousands of jobs, and a vision to export green hydrogen across the Atlantic to Europe and Asia. Floating turbines anchored far from shore tap into deep water winds that fixed turbines can't reach. This technology, once experimental, is now set to make Newfoundland a global leader in renewable energy exports. Project director Aaron McLeod puts it simply, we're not just generating power for ourselves, we're shipping clean energy to the world. Local Mi'kmaq, Mi'kmaq partners are at the table, shaping agreements that promise both economic benefits and environmental stewardship. If successful, this project could redefine what it means to be an energy province, turning wind and water into a new export for the 21st century. Two visions for Canada's future now stand side by side. In the west, the Trans Mountain pipeline expansion stretches 1,150 kilometers from Alberta to the Pacific, adding capacity for more than 500,000 extra barrels of oil every day. Its final price tag, over $30 billion, reflects years of legal battles, environmental reviews, and the installation of some of the world's most advanced safety systems. More than 22,000 sensors monitor the line in real time, feeding data to control centers that can trigger emergency shutoffs within minutes. Pipeline operators call it the safest in Canadian history. Yet, the debate goes far beyond technology. Indigenous leaders along the route raise concerns about land rights, spill response, and the long-term risks to salmon streams and traditional territory. No sensor can protect what's irreplaceable, 
says one hereditary chief. The pipeline's defenders point to jobs and export revenues, while critics see a carbon-intensive legacy at odds with Canada's climate commitments. Meanwhile, on the Pacific coast, a different kind of project is taking shape. Vancouver's Oak Ridge Centre is being reborn as a $5 billion mini-city. 2,500 new homes, office towers and cultural spaces, all stitched together by rooftop gardens and solar panels. The entire neighbourhood is designed for walkability, with green public plazas and streets built for people, not just cars. Architect Gregory Henriquez describes it as more than a development. This is a blueprint for how cities can grow, dense, green, and human-focused. Oak Ridge's promise is a low-carbon, community-centered future, where daily life happens close to home and emissions are kept in check by design. These two projects, one rooted in resource export, the other in urban reinvention, capture the crossroads facing Canada as it builds for the decades ahead. From the $28 billion Ontario line to the 300-turbine Newfoundland Wind Project, Canada is investing over $60 billion in urban mobility and more than $140 billion in energy and infrastructure. These projects are cutting commute times, reducing emissions by millions of tons, and creating tens of thousands of jobs. The Bruce Power refurbishment alone secures 30% of Ontario's electricity for decades, while the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, at $122.6 billion, remains one of the most debated energy projects in recent history. Yet, not all answers are clear. Construction delays, cost overruns, and environmental impacts are still being monitored with some planning documents and long-term outcomes yet to be released. What's certain is that Canada's choices today, documented in the public records and on construction sites, are shaping how people move, live, and power their communities. The evidence shows a nation building for the future, piece by piece, across city cores and coastlines.